hello today or i guess like right now is the release of shadow me by tata Mafi, which is the novella after restore me and kenji's pov if you're watching this you probably already know that information if not you about to get real spoiled bonnie just texted me a question about the book and i haven't read it yet so bonnie be quiet i know the second that i turn on my kindle app is my phone charged Good enough. I'm gonna have it sitting there waiting for me. It's gonna be eight chapters and 64 pages of Kenji love. Kenji is my favorite character ever. I love him so much. Oh no, my camera has low battery. I'm gonna have to charge my camera before we do this. I think the plan is I'm just gonna set up my camera and I'm going to record me reading the whole thing and just react because it's only like 64 pages. It'll only take me like an hour to read. That should be a good vlog. <laughs> but I'm gonna finish uploading this video. I'm going to charge my camera and I'll be back. I'm gonna make a nest down on the floor so that we can have a pretty backdrop instead of just like me living sitting in bed But welcome to this vlog. I am so excited. I feel like I'm so glad. I'm not anxious I'm just pure excitement right now So what I've learned from this experience is anytime that you're about to film a highly anticipated video Charge your gosh darn battery because then you won't be sitting here at midnight an hour past the book's release with nothing to do. It's so hard to write with one hand. A whole flippin' two hours later, now that my camera's charged, welcome to my floor. I wasn't nervous at 11.15 when the email dropped that it came to my Kindle, but after waiting, let me repeat, for two hours, it's kind of been simmering. I've had a couple hoes tweet me like, it was so good. I'm like, shut the fuck up. So now I'm kind of, the pressure's on. I have an earphone in because my Shatter Me group chat is all in a video hangout right now and they're freaking out and I'm freaking out just by proximity. In case of emergencies, this is my blankie. She has made many appearances in Shatter Me videos. I have not one but two water bottles in case I get thirsty. And I have the entire Shatter Me series just in case here we go there she is oh my god okay so we've already read the first chapter because it was dropped chapter one okay i need like context of where this begins okay intense training session two days ago what was two days ago that wasn't in the book i'm just thinking like was that the scene from ignite me i'm like no there's a whole book after ignite me okay so i know this is not new information but adam can, can choke <laughs> It's glad to see he's still on brand this many years later. I kind of don't want to read this. Because <laughs> I just reread Restore Me, so everything's fresh, and I'm like, uh... Okay, so again, to place context, he says, I remember what happened yesterday. Was yesterday, not, not the symposium, yesterday was Drunk Juliet. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Apparently Juliet has a sister. Apparently Warner tortured the sister. Allegedly. <laughs> if Lena, if I see her name, I'm so glad Kenji said his ex-girlfriend because if I have to read that name in this book, he still calls her J in his inner monologue. I'm emo. Where's my boyfriend that calls me W? After dinner last night, I did something very, very stupid. Was that in Restore Me? I can, you know how books are written? It's so that they say stuff and then you keep reading, then you find out. I should have brought tissues over here. I'm a little sniffly. That's kind of gross. Hmm, Kenji Kishimoto being better than all of us, being grateful. He deserves the world. I forced myself to say it out loud. <laughs> say it, vampire. <laughs> I've already read this like 12 times, so I'm just like, mm-hmm. Yep, it's still the same. So, okay, wait, there's a knock on the door. <sighs> the time is here. This just in, Kenji sleeps without pants on. Me too. It would have been such a power move if Kenji answered the door with no pants on and it's Warner standing there. After rereading Ign Ignite, no, what? I can't say words. Restore me in the scene where Kenji is in Warner's room after he has a panic attack and Delalu walks in and like <laughs> Warner's shirt is on backwards. The sheets are all over the floor. I'm just like, you know what? Weirder things have happened. <laughs> he looks shiny and polished. I love him. He's like a little button looking at me like I'm an insect. <laughs> That's me. Werner would squash me under his foot. Okay, this is the morning that 
people arrive. Okay. See, when you keep reading, you learn things that you were questioning earlier. Every time that I'm awake past three in the morning, I'm like, wow, Warner would be up right now too. And I feel good about myself, but then I remember I didn't go to sleep. So he's still better than me. Honestly, Kenji and Juliet are so similar because he's having this whole paragraph about being like, I was so compassionate about animals and I cried when I saw a dead bird. I'm just like, are, are y'all the same? Yeah, meant to be. Friend friendship, friendship meant to be. Nothing else, no Carraras in this house. I love how like Warner's montage of things that happened to him as a kid, he was like, yeah, one time my dad broke my leg and then put me in the field. One time he cut my leg open and I had to stitch it back up. One time I had to shoot my friends and Kenji's was just like, one time I had a dog and then another time I saw a dead bird. <laughs> it's just like the gravity and the different levels. LOL. Hmm. Hey man, are you all right? Kenji talks like such a bro. It's like the only heterosexual thing about him. Oh no, okay, chapter two. <laughs> it's gonna be, my stomach hurts. I'm so excited. This is new Shatter Me content. This only happens like once a year. Okay, chapter two. I stand in the doorway. I'm not gonna read it out loud. I saw the word Ian and my whole body just like curdled. I'm like, <clears throat> Why are they making fun of him? I'm literally, okay, Lily and Ian are on my hit list. Try me today. <gasps> he said fuck up! <laughs> yes! Take me to church. I have been begging, ugh, my camera just fell. I have been begging for an F-bomb in this series and God has smiled on me. I need to set my camera back up now because I just knocked you over. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh no, I just lost my page. This is my life. I feel like all of Restormy, we were like, there weren't enough of the side characters. And now Todd is like, have a little. I need someone to spot me. Ian, I hope a weight falls on you and you die. This, okay, I said this, I don't think in this video, but I feel like you should have read Shadow Me before reading the Defy Me excerpt because after reading the Defy Me excerpt, I know like where that takes place. So I know kind of what's gonna happen in this book. I know that I hate Ian <laughs> so much. So every time it's mentioned, I'm just like, Ian who? Ugh, you know? I didn't think I would get emotional about this. Okay, can she say I'm the only one who knew about it? No, bitch. There was an entire fandom. <laughs> we knew. <laughs> Every time something makes me happy, Kenji says something emo. I'm reminded all the time of my own solitude, baby. I'm on my way, blue skidoo, we can too. <laughs> Things in my life that I didn't realize would be in my life are like a Kenji showering scene. Kenny, I'm a big raw bleeding heart. I want to give him so many kisses. Our Supreme Commander was slowly marinating in half a pint of Anderson's best whiskey. <laughs> That's a sentence. Sierra, that's my bitch. That's my bad bitch. I'm gonna cry reading this chapter about Muslim women getting stripped of their hijabs. Like I, where do I skip? Cause I'm gonna sob. Oh, okay, I'm fine. Zira, everyone in this series gets so many kisses except Ian and Adam. Actually, one thing I've been wondering is Kenji just said her eyes lit up and she looked younger and sweeter. If she's the same age as Juliet and possibly the same age as Emmeline and Kenji's 20, age gap, question mark? I'm gonna leave it there. Kenji, you dumb slut. Here's the thing. I'm not a Kenzira stan. I'm not like, woo, yay Kenji and Azira. If I were to have that mindset and I go in to define me without reading this, I would still be mad about it. But like, this is the development of that so far. I'm kind of gauging this book on I like, would I recommend that you have to read it to read the series? For right now, it's like, this is where all the romance development is occurring. Like, do people who don't care about Shatter Me as much as I do care about the side characters. <laughs> I'm just like, do people, do people want to see this? I don't, ugh, I'm just biased. Okay, I'm gonna keep reading because I'm stressed. <laughs> I 
keep saying, what if Nazira and Kenji speak Japanese to one another? I'm gonna pee. Wait, no, no, no. Oh my God, if it actually happens, I'm gonna scream. Oh wait, Kenji doesn't speak? Wow, I, I, I read, do you speak? And he shakes his head. Never mind. <laughs> Ew, can, uh, horny Kenji is not something I'm ready for. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't prepare myself for that part of this novella, but I'm really just not ready for Kenji to be horny. Can we take like a two minute water break so that I could like reset and be like, okay, Kenji has a pee pee too. <laughs> okay, we recalibrated, I think I'm good. If Todd Amafi Writes one more scene where a guy is describing his boner. I swear to God, I'm just I'm gonna sip more water because <laughs> that shit hurt it. <laughs> Sarah J. Mass did not come to play. Kenji is such a fascinating character, and I think I like I don't know where my life would have been without this book. I'm on page 20. <laughs> I feel like we got this really good exploration of Warner's because something I love about Restore Me is that what Warner expresses and what he thinks are like different. <laughs> Restore Me was interesting because you get to see like here's everything that goes on then here's like the one word he'll say out loud. This book is unpacking all of that mentality that he is thinking about but then stuff that he says and just like it's fascinating to see like what's going on in their head versus what they say because he's sitting there like he's in love with Nazira he's like wants to be with her he's having sexual thoughts about her but then out loud he's like ha 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 I'm joking and I'm just it's such him to like rely on humor to get through awkward stuff but also like baby <laughs> you're allowed to have emotions we don't gotta pretend to be funny all the time that's one of my favorite lines of ignite me where he's like sometimes i don't want to be the funny guy i just want to cry and like yeah same i love this i have my reading or my book journal right here where i wrote shadow me and i already gave it five stars because like who am i kidding Take a shot every time Tahada talks about dignity in these books. <laughs> I get to hold on to my dignity. Okay, Anderson. That was all a flashback and we just came back to real time and I blacked out and forgot it was even a flashback. Good transition, Tahada. Love that for her. I'm late. Warner's going to kill me. He's a little distracted right now. I'm... Also, are we going to pretend like being killed by Warner wouldn't be an honor? What kind of workout was he doing that he's so sorry he can't put a shirt on? I have questions. I mean, I shouldn't have questions because I was out of breath just standing up to go get my phone, but like... God bless America. Nazira is here. You, Kenji. Keep it together! Oh my, we need another water break. Kenji is too horny for the, for me right now. We need like gospel music playing right now. Our God is an awesome God hero. If I have to read the sentence, her fingernails digging into my back while she screams in a non Sarah J Mass novel, we're having a bad time. Might have to mark off a, a star for that. What am I doing with my life? Okay, back to the book. Honestly, this water isn't even for me anymore. It's to take breaks when Kenji's too horny. Oh, I just saw the sentence again. Oh God. Can I put white out on my phone? Okay, good. Next page. Oof, past that. There's a part of me that's like, this is so sweet. He's falling in love. He's horny for someone. He finally gets someone. But then the back of my head that has been ruined <laughs> by all my theories, I'm like, but what if? <laughs> Because he says, like, this isn't normally me. I'm not normally like this. Which could just be like, ooh, star-crossed lovers. But also, what if it's that? What if, what if something's happening here that's more sinister? And he's, like, being planted to do something. What if someone's controlling his mind? This is what happens when you're a Shatter Me fan and you have to wait 12 months between Restore Me and Defy Me and nothing makes sense anymore and you don't trust anything. Oh my god, chapter two is over. That was a roller coaster. Okay, chapter three. Ooh, it's Warner. Okay. I love him. I love him. He's perched carefully on a stiff chair. <laughs> He's staring at a wall. That is like the most quintessential Warner descriptor ever. He's just sitting 
staring at a wall. And no one here is shocked. I don't know how Warner feels about muffins, but I'm guessing he's not a fan. <laughs> Only if he could eat it with a fork and knife. Oh no, he said, what did I miss? Now we gotta sing, what did I miss? You know, I asked Tata in 2016 if she'd seen Hamilton and she said no. So I think every Hamilton reference I find in this is just words sometimes are the same when you use them in certain orders, but still, I'm gonna pretend that's a Hamilton reference. <laughs> Every time Kenji calls someone bro, I just convulse. <laughs> My foot is so asleep right now. It's more asleep than Warner on sedatives at the beginning of Defy Me, so we're gonna stretch out. Oh my god. If I even smell Lena, out the I'm going out this window. My exit plan is the window. Oh my god. God. Warner feeling Kenji's emotions has me in a chokehold. Them giving each other relationship advice is gonna send me into a stroke. I need more water. No one's being horny. I'm just stressed. <laughs> Jesus, Lord Louise. You're having trouble again. Gee. <laughs> Tell us more, Mr. Warner. You're having trouble with your love life. Why? Literally, why is he talking about this right now? <laughs> like, if, if we're comparing our love lives right now. Let's see. Um, Broke up with girlfriend because you tortured her sister for two years and she got drunk and tried to make out with you in the shower. And you had to reject her and you didn't sleep all night versus Kenji and Azira. <laughs> but go off order. Go off. Every time I read a new Shattery book, I just become, this is like not related to what I'm reading right now, but I'm, I'm like terrified that one of the characters is going to say something that in my head I've been like, they will never say that word. Like I have a list of words that Warner would probably never say, like the word pinky. I just like, can you imagine Warner just being like, my pinky? Like, no. <laughs> Every time I read a Shattery book, I'm like, what if he says something that's so not his character like in restore me juliet said both the words poop and pee and i'm like that doesn't exist in your world you're too good for that so every time i read warner dialogue i'm just like oh no don't mess this up for me <laughs> it's nazira isn't it warner you intuitive bitch i love you i suspect she might eviscerate you eviscerate me book six in the shatter me series you know, I've always said that I wish Shatter Me characters were sword trained, and the fact that Nazira's weapon of choice to eviscerate Kenji would be with a knife, I'm kind of into it. Let me sip this horny juice real quick. Why does Warner talk like an actual robot? He talks like Siri talks. Like, if I'm like, hey Siri, is Nazira dangerous? Siri would be like, hey, oh no, my Siri just came on. Not you, I'm so sorry. If I said that, it'd be like, I find it necessary to remind you that she was raised to be lethal. I wouldn't cross her. It's like, okay, thanks Siri. That's the way he talks. I, just, I don't understand. My favorite joke that the characters make. Okay, I think Kenji originally said this in like Ignite Me. Someone said something in Ignite Me that was like really dreary. I think Warner was like, we're all gonna die. And Kenji said, wow, thanks for the pep talk. And that line was also in Restore Me when Nazira said something really sad and <laughs> Juliet went, thanks for the pep talk. And just now Warner says that and Kenji went, Thanks for the pep talk. I love that recurring joke. That's a t-shirt idea. I have a list of t-shirt ideas going. I just want, thanks for the pep talk. <laughs> See, again, this is like reading this out of order, having read the first chapter of Defy Me. In this book, she's like, I have something to tell you. And now Kenji's like, I wonder what she has to say to me. But I'm just sitting here after reading the chapter where they tell what she was going to tell them about. And I'm just like, wow. I think Epic Reads accidentally pressed send on that snippet and we weren't supposed to read it till after this because I'm reading these out of order is a whole experience. <laughs> Wait a second, did you just give me dating advice? Oh, I'm merely returning the favor, my boys. With an elegant pivot, he opens the door. <laughs> Warner and that elegant pivot. I love him. Does he know that? The dude moves like a prince. He's always dressed like a prince. I don't know if this book is gonna confirm that Kenji is bi or pan. This is textual evidence. <laughs> Kenji saying, ugh, I hate everything. Why are we all Kenji? Why is Kenji me? Oh, tag yourself? I'm Kenji pulling a muffin out of his pocket? <laughs> I stress eat it, ripping off huge chunks. Kenji, I'm right here. I don't have a lip piercing for you to stare at, but I do have... I'm not gonna finish that sentence. <laughs> Why do you always insist on eating like an animal? You leave my boy alone, Warner. At least he, you- Okay, honestly, if we're comparing the ways people eat, eating a muffin with his hands is the way to go. <laughs> Don't you dare speak to me with your mouth full. I'd be like, okay, dad. Jesus Christ. Mm. Stand up to him, Kenji. Ooh. Oh, he's sassy. He went- 
off. <laughs> Not to like toot my own horn, but toot toot. I've touched on the subjects in fan fiction before that like Warner comes from such privilege. He's never had to worry about getting food on the table or like being hungry. So the fact that Kenji calls Warner out for making fun of him for eating, being like, you should try starving to death before you make fun of the way I eat. I'm just like, it's so good. Something changes in Warner's face. Ugh. What's it like to be yelled at, little son? Oh, you bitch, he doesn't even apologize. Ugh. <laughs> Maybe I missed something, but these new kids don't seem that scary. This is the perspective that's gonna like keep us going through Defy Me because it's gonna be like, all right guys, when the Australian wilderness were almost dead, and then Kenji's perspective is gonna be like, LOL, I wanna make Nazira scream. And then Warner's gonna be like, I'm choking and dying, someone's kicking me in the stomach. Then Kenji's gonna be like, ha ha ha, pull muffin out of pocket. Ooh, Stefan is tall and black with a British accent. Mm -hmm. Side eye emoji. Okay, I see you, Stefan. Ew. Oh, I saw the L word. Oh, she's absent. Okay, we're fine. If I have to read this scene, we better at least get the hallway kiss scene to make up for it. Like, I've just, it's one or, it's, it's both not one or the other. I'm gonna poop myself. I hate this. <laughs> Stefan, I'm getting fewer serial killer vibes from him. People have theories that like Stefan and Juliet are gonna have a thing because in Restore Me, it's like they have a, like, eye contact because you know that indicates a whole history of doing stuff getting less serial killer vibes from him i feel like she's setting up something like why why do we why are we supposed to trust stefan more than the other guys you see how i'm clutching my blankie i'm stressed <laughs> oh no oh no oh okay no theories you can't pull this line tahara anytime she says something looks familiar my brain is like information cataloging. Let's begin this theory. Stefan is wearing a bracelet. He's seen it before. So in Restore Me, we find out that Castle has sons. I'm so convinced that we're going to meet Castle's. Like it was sort of hinted that his sons were dead, but if I don't see a body, no one's dead. I will bet someone, I will, okay, you know what? Write this down. PayPal, $50. This has something to do with Castle, this bracelet. Watch there be like a whole plot in the next book, like also Kenji was the Supreme Commander's son and his memory was erased. <laughs> okay, then Juliet shows up. My bitch, who's my girl? Who is it? My girl. She seems harder. Like you a couple chapters ago saying you wanna make Nazira scream, Ju horny juice. The drinking game for this video is take a shot every time I say I'm stressed. I love her so much. This is the one scene I didn't want to be in this book and it's in this book. I don't know what I was expecting. Oh. Okay, so after Juliet says good morning, he replies, damn princess, is that really you? I've always thought that line was like a little bit weird and awkward and out of character, but seeing the thought process that goes on in between her saying what she said and him saying that, I'm like, oh, okay. Cause it's like, she sounds mean and it's really unlike her. And I'm like, oh, Juliet, I don't like this version of her. Can we get Warner and her smashing again? This is a sentence I've never said before. The thing that I loved about Fracture Me <laughs> was that it's the only time in the series before Restore Me that you get to see Juliet from someone else's point of view. So although I liked Restore Me, I feel like his perspective, like every time he looks at her, it's like Kenji looking at Nazira. So it's very, uh, I'm stressed, I'm burping. It's very, I love her, she's perfect. But seeing this where she's, from Kenji's perspective, where he's like, she looks bad. Because in Warner's perspective in this scene, he's like, she looks like a new person. She's so beautiful. But Kenji's like, she's scary. Like, I love getting that satellite view of everyone. I'm just at this point stating reasons why this book is getting five stars. <laughs> There's no way this book's getting less than five stars. Okay, I just saw the L word though, so maybe, maybe it's gonna not. <laughs> <laughs> Lena burst through the door like a debutante. What does that metaphor even mean? What's a debutante? Is that like beauty pageant people? Oh, aristocratic or upper class. Okay. I was imagining like toddlers and tiaras. No, I'm not sipping horny juice while Lena is on screen. Juliet is stiff and superior. I felt those words in my soul. Castle can choke. I hate him so much. The way that he treated Juliet in Warner and Restore Me was a lot. I have to recover. But I'm giving him one compliment. There are things he's right about, and one of them is that it's gonna be hard for Juliet to recover from the news, and this is the result of that, and I don't like it, and I want her to get but like, but now I'm like, how can this be undone and defy me other than like her being exposed to a lot of love from her parents? which isn't gonna happen. I don't know, I guess I'll just get diarrhea. We'll see. Lena hasn't even talked yet and I'm already so tired. 
Oh. I've seen Juliet angry, but she's never been cruel. She's not mean. Lena was mean to her for, let her be mean to Lena. Do you know what Lena did to her? Ooh, ooh, wait, I got to, this is not horny juice anymore. This is tea. I gotta sip some of this. Kenji just said, Warner might murder me if he knew I felt this way, but the truth is I know Juliet better than anyone. It's scalding, but it's delicious and it's truth tea. Ooh, I love that for him. Yes, I agree, Kenji. The math is simple. Jay and I have been closer longer. Right, somewhere out there, someone who shipped Kenji and Julia in 2012 is thriving. <laughs> Okay, I'm not a Kenji and Juliet shipper from 2012, but Kenji just said she's all heart, as in like she feels really deeply. And I would say about 30 pages ago, Kenji said almost the same thing, that he's a raw bleeding heart. So hashtag compatible as friends. <laughs> oh good, oh he blacked out and didn't hear what Lena said. Oh God bless America land that I love. That was a shot, just poured one out for him. Of course he tunes back in when Valentina speaks because Valentina is our queen and we need to learn and listen to everything she says. Honestly, when they're choosing new Supreme Commanders because the old ones suck, if Valentina doesn't get it over Nicholas, I, I'm not saying I'll fight, but I will fight. But that's something I'm nervous about. I'm like going off script. This isn't about this book. When we're choosing new people that are gonna run the world, is it gonna go back to like how the countries were before? Are the people who are the, the current sons of the Supreme Com sons and daughters of the Supreme Commanders gonna take it over their place? That's why I'm wondering. I'm like, if they kill Juliet's parents, is she gonna then take over New Zealand? Is Emmeline gonna take over New Zealand? <laughs> I love how in Warner's perspective, it like has all this Spanish written out, but in Kenji's perspective, he's like, she says something in Spanish and then says something in English and then says something in Spanish. That's me just being completely lost. Oh, Juliet doesn't understand either. Protect her at all costs. Even if it's a million dollars, I will pay that to protect her. Wait, Juliet doesn't understand, neither does Castle. Okay, sorry, I'm I'm gonna flex on Castle so hard right now because I can't stand him. He flexed so hard on Warner being like, I have so many files because I want him to be Supreme Commander. You can't even speak Spanish. Sit down. That same statement doesn't apply to Juliet though because she is exempt from all criticism. It's so on brand Kenji to be zoned out for half the conversation. The entire premise of this book is just like Kenji not understanding anything and not listening to the entire conversation, but still contributing what he has to say. <laughs> oh wait, I just realized because we skipped over that whole part because Kenji blacked out, we didn't get to hear Juliet's iconic line. I hope she goes back and tells him about it. It was the best line of 2018. <laughs> Kenji defending Juliet. Honestly, I'm gonna mail Kenji one of my Juliet Ferrars Defense Squad t-shirts because him threatening to kick Nicholas in the face. I need to sip this tea again. <laughs> I love this. I love this book so much. Kenji just called Nicholas bowing to her a douche bow. I don't know what I did to deserve this character in my life, but I'm being blessed. <laughs> Juliet going off on Warner, I'm convulsing. Oh, how the turns have tabled. In Restore Me, I was annotating because every time Warner would call someone an idiot, I would put a sticky tab on it, but Kenji just called Warner an idiot. <laughs> I love Kenji so much. He says, I know the word C, it means yes. I'm not a complete idiot. That's why? is Kenji me. Oh my god. I loved Kenji before, but like we are soul sisters after this book, except I don't visualize making women scream, so. That line, no one's gonna be over that line. I'm gonna be on my deathbed like, ah, oh, it's been a good life. But remember when? <laughs> oh my gosh, earlier yesterday I tweeted that the worst six words in the Shatter Me series were Juliet saying I could feel him inside me. I just vomited in my mouth saying that out loud. Dare I say, <laughs> the new worst six words <laughs> in this series are Kenji imagining. I'm not, I'm not gonna finish that sentence. I love how like me complimenting a funny part of this book just turned back into me complaining about Kenji being horny. <laughs> Basically this entire chapter 
Kenji's been like, Julia is so cold and calculating, like this isn't her. And the only time she snaps out of that is to ask like, where are you from? To the twins. And I think even in Restore Me and Warner's perspective, he noticed how like she lit up. Since she is in New Zealand in the beginning of the next book, I wonder if something about like the world and traveling and like getting out of her comfort zone is gonna like snap her back to normal Juliet. <laughs> I don't know. I just think that's something noteworthy that like she's really interested in travel. Love this book, but I'm just reading a scene that I've already read before, so now I'm kind of ready for it to be over. <laughs> Warner's still staring at her, saying nothing. I almost slap him. I would have paid cash. <sighs> oh, that shit hurted. Warner told them to give them a minute. Oh no, this changes everything. Okay, if Kenji takes two whole lines to describe the color of Warner's eyes, we have to have a conversation about how he's pan. Oh, Stefan! Okay, I'm a, I'm a Stefan stan. That's, a, that's another shirt idea. I like him. If someone made Valentina's dialogue into a book on Goodreads, five stars. <laughs> like Valentina alone being in this book five stars. Now I don't want to turn the page because Lena's gonna say something. They're all like, oh my gosh, their relationship is so beautiful. And Lena's gonna be like, I eat bears for dinner. I don't, I'm sorry, Russia. I don't know how, <laughs> what y'all talk about. Oh good, the chapter's ending. Haha, <laughs> not today, Lena. Oh no, chapter four. Castle's gonna get a swift kick to the nuts if I have to read his name one more time. Kenji's like, we should give them space to talk. And Castle's like, Buzzfeed Unsolved, Warnet talking in the hallway edition. Ooh, wait, T. Kenji not entirely trusting Castle after like realizing he's been hiding stuff from him, perhaps is a mood. I'll sip to that. Okay, I stop feeding into my theories. Stop giving me theories. So Kenji's like, I'm afraid to talk about Castle because I wonder what his answers might reveal about me. I thought Kenji was our one safe character that isn't gonna have some like dramatic backstory revealed about around him. I swear to God, if they pull something like Kenji's from the reestablishment, there's no way, there's no way. <laughs> Leave Kenji alone. Ooh, Castle? I think they'll have to continue to heal individually. I'm deleting every tweet I've ever posted talking about how Castle is Warnet's number one supporter. You are a slut, good sir. Oh my god. Jesus, take the wheel in the entire car. It's them kissing. Okay. Oh, I've never seen them kiss before. Me neither. They're not real. You know what, is this the first time, this is also the first time we're seeing Warnet from someone else's point of view. I mean, I don't know why we would have it cause like no one's been hiding in their closet narrating it, but it's so nuts. <laughs> Honestly, there are so many good epitaphs in this book, like on Warner's grave, it could be like, Aaron Warner Anderson, whatever year to whatever year. This quote from Kenji Kishimoto, a sociopath with an extensive coat collection. <laughs> that's who he is, that's, that's a summary. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Something about her lights a fire in him. He looks alive when she's in his arms. Human like I've never seen him before. I'm stressed I'm gonna play my water bottle flute. Oh, I hate that. I hate that Kenji says, I remind myself that this girl could probably kill me with a twitch of her hand. That's sad. Why would he think that? Okay, but like a second after he says that, he gra like touches her. So one of my favorite lines from Restore, it's not one of my favorites, it's a line from Restore Me, is Juliet talking about Kenji saying like, he's not afraid to touch me. And like, if I accidentally brush him, nothing's gonna happen. So like, I don't know. I kind of like the acknowledgement that like, even though she has all this power, like they still interact and they don't let that get between them. This is the girl I know, the friend I love. She's all heart. Someone put that on merch. Like, if no one uses these quotes to make me products that I'm gonna spend money on, then what was the point of publishing this book? <laughs> She's so tiny, like a bird with hollow bones. <laughs> okay, so now Juliet's the bird. Oh no, theory time. Oh my God. I pat her head, so fuzzy. <laughs> I forgot she was bald. That's another epitaph. Juliet Ferrars, this year to this year. So fuzzy. <laughs> 
it feels so good to read a shatter me book and not be afraid of what's gonna happen next because like i know where this book is gonna end it's gonna be bad we know what's gonna happen and the next book's coming out soon and this book is just a feel good book and i mean i was warned beforehand that it was gonna be good again i mentioned in my last vlog how like badly i reacted to restore me i'm very proud of myself that i can get through this and be like it's very good i'm enjoying this book it's new tatamafi content it's very well written i love what it adds to the series my heart She's all heart. Oh no, Kenji. Nazir must be a traitor to the reestablishment. Oh wait, that's a good thing. Sorry. <laughs> I saw the word traitor and I was like, don't call her that, but it's okay to be a traitor to the reestablishment. They're all hoes. That's the thing though. Is I keep going back and forth between like, is Nazir good or bad? Cause like, obviously I love her. She's iconic. At the end of Restore Me, I don't know how much of what happened is her responsibility. I don't know like what she can do, like what's the extent of her powers. So I don't want to automatically be like, oh, she might be working with the people to like do bad things. But at the same time, it's like, what's happening? This is literally, I went off on that whole rant about Nazira, but Kenju just summed it all up. <laughs> He's like, maybe Nazira's secret is that she's here to help us. Maybe there's nothing to be afraid of. Maybe she's just perfect. I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chief. I'm kind of skim reading the dialogue because I just read this literally today. I'm like considering now, like, do you have to read this between the two? And I feel like Destroy Me offers new information. I'm like, what's happening in between them? But this is literally just Restore Me in Kenji's perspective. Like it's not a bridge, but I say that even though I'm only 47 pages into this. So we'll see at the end if it if it pulls through with it being a bridge. <laughs> Cause so far it's just like a fun little added thing, but I don't really think that you need this to read between them. Again, I'm just wondering, like the more I read dialogue that I've already read, the more I'm like, what? what's the importance of just like rewriting this from Kenji's point of view? Because he could have skipped this scene where she, I guess, Todd is writing it, not Kenji. <laughs> she could have just skipped this scene and gone to like important parts that we haven't seen before, but she's focusing on stuff that we've already read. So I'm just like, hmm. Chapter five. Sonia and Sarah, it's my gals. Oh, girls. I've been hoping for more characterization of the twins and like the backstory of them forcing him into bed after he said he's sick and tired. That's so soft. I love them. What's this bottle? I am Confucian. See, in Restore Me, it mentioned something like, oh, the twins need a space that they can experiment and like work on antidotes and stuff. And I was like, do they do that? Because I feel like it wasn't discussed at all in Unravel Me. So apparently, They've been stirring something up. <laughs> Healing pills. Hmm. Ooh, they better have slipped Warner and Julia a bottle of these too. Because if she's in New Zealand with some healing pills from the twins, she's going to crush it. She's going to knock down that mountain to get out of there. Oh, did James help? He helped. I love him. Okay, they're talking about James now. It's fine. I'm fine. Oh, he's got a big future ahead of him. That's the foreshadowing that he's gonna die. James is one of my characters that I'm like, I love you so much, but you are not safe. Like Castle and James are my number two people that I'm like, you're gonna be first to go if someone goes. Or it's gonna be Adam to protect James, or it's gonna be like some combination of like people sacrificing themselves for another. Do you remember when Juliet was shot? If we're going back to these poison bullets, I'm gonna have to literally take a shot because I'm too sober to deal with those theories right now. We've discovered something important. Where's my juice? I'm stressed. I know I keep saying I'm stressed, but it's like, I have an issue with like, if someone gets injured in a way that's permanent, because for me, it's like the Shatter Me characters have been a certain way their entire existence in my brain so like since 2013 i've had these images of these characters and their personalities have changed and their powers have changed i've slowly been able to accommodate their changes like even with juliet shaving her head i was like okay it's just hair you can reimagine that but i think if something were to affect them permanently that was huge like i don't know something with the poison bullets hurting her in some way or like making her have like a different outlook and like hallucinations like i'm so scared that they're gonna be stuck with something that in my brain is too big of a change to make that's why i'm so nervous with these poison bullets or like even just in general the series continuing oh i'm like please don't change it too much like please allow some things to turn back to normal we discovered something that directly corresponds with the tattoos on the dead body of the assailant Tag yourself, I'm stressed. <laughs> 
tell him it's sector 241. I'm on my way to commit murder at sector 241. Mark my words, sector 240. What state is sector 241? That's gotta be like Alabama or something. We got a message from Nuria. Who's Nuria? Who is that? You know what? I've had this thing going on the entire book that when I'm confused, I can just keep reading. That's what we're gonna do. Oh, okay, and then it stops, so there's no explanation. Great, love that for me. Oh no, I have too many theories. We can't be doing this. If Castle knows this person, and Castle knows other people who are like underground organizations like Omega Point, was that person trying to kill Juliet in order to like make room for Castle to be the lead? Or like were they killing her as an excuse for the person shooting her to get killed and captured so that they could send a message? Like, I take the stairs. Tag your fighter. Are you Warner running up the stairs for when Juliet got shot or are you Kenji running up the stairs to go talk to Castle about this Sector 241 person? Not since the boys were murdered. Come on. I had hope. <laughs> Scratch every theory about Castle's sons being alive. Mm. The internet was one of the first things the reestablishment took away. Oh, I could not live in this society. <laughs> They don't have the internet? To the 2015 Tumblr Anon who said, what porn does Warner watch? He doesn't, it doesn't exist. Whoa, okay, I love this world building from the gods. Oh, this is what we needed in book one. There was a degree of world building in like Shadow Man and Ravel Man, you hear about like, oh, the reestablishment is a thing. But seeing the transition from things that we know in our pop culture to, and here's how that was gotten rid of so that we could make way for this new, like unfamiliar regime, that's interesting. That's so cool. So like hearing them be like, oh yeah, we read War and Peace to see if we wanted to burn it. And I'm just like, War and Peace exists, so it makes it a lot less abstract, and I love when they world build that way. I think that's so smart to be like, let's locate something that you know, and now let's get rid of it. <laughs> Whoa, hackers were publicly hanged? Hanged? Is that a thing? Did they bring that back? That's pretty festive, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, the reestablishment tore families apart on purpose theory. I need like a sound effect for when like the theory goes off in my brain. One of our theories is were Julia and Emmeline taken away from their parents like forcefully and then the documents were falsified that the parents gave them up. I know their parents aren't go gonna be nice people that I fall in love with but I still am hanging on to some hope that they didn't want to give up Juliet so like maybe they'll be sort of nice. So I'm wondering like if the reestablishment tore families apart on purpose. Tangent, that could also have something to do with like Anderson and wives he doesn't love and like adultery. But also like is Juliet's family better than we think it is just because I'm holding on to stupid hope <laughs> that they're not gonna kill her? Ugh. Tata go off about race relations. That's also one of the best parts of Restore Me is like hearing how racism played into the down spiral of the country. It's like, yep. Ew. Okay, I hate these descriptions of the reestablishment. The reestablishment is gross. We we gotta ditch her. <laughs> also, I love that the, the discussion of diversity is through Kenji's point of view. Like, I think that was so smart to do that. <gasps> no, we're getting a Brendan backstory. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. I've always wondered why is he in the US? Oh my god. They're tearing families apart. Wait. <gasps> this is so sad. Okay, I said I didn't like Lily earlier, but I lied. Lily can I love her. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. I would have never guessed that. That's so sad. That's fucked up. Jesus Christ. You can just be like yeeted away from your family and put in a different sector on a different continent. I need a Brendan novella now. <laughs> I'm writing a fan fiction. And that's why I care about James so much. Oh, okay, so James was in one of those orphanages for people who are displaced. I keep complaining that like different threads from the series aren't really going together. Like obviously we know that these books were kind of an afterthought. I don't think they were intentionally planned, but I think it's so smart how she makes something like this and then like applies it to stuff we already know. It's believable in a way that makes me think it was intentional, which like, was it? Was it not? We'll never know, but wow, that's smart to like make those connections. Adam rocked James in his arms until the sun came up. I love them. I don't, I just love James. 
<laughs> Oof. When I reread this, I'm gonna be underlining some quotes and hopelessness makes you reckless. <laughs> Ooh, he's talking about the orphanage. I'm like, this is one of those things that I'm like, do not tell me something I don't want to know. I wish that flashback lasted a lot longer. I wish we saw more nine-year-old Kenji out of Mega Point. When I finally find Castle, he's not alone and he's not okay. Cool. This is getting to some tea. Let me get my tea ready. Okay, again, it mentions the fact that Haider has a slight accent, but Nizira doesn't. Is that significant? Am I overthinking? I think I'm overthinking, but like, oh no, it's talking about having animals on base. If he says we're not allowed to have animals on base, I'm gonna have to unstand this series. Miss Ferrars is gonna change those rules because we're allowed to have cats and dogs. Aw, they're flirting. I want a boyfriend. It says no one's allowed to be in here with any kind of weapon. That's one of the questions I had because in Restore Me it was like a bullet hits me and I'm like did they not take guns away from people? And Kenji says people aren't allowed to have weapons. Oh I'm gonna get into theories but I haven't even read the scene yet. I'm just gonna mention this because I know I'm gonna go off for 10 minutes and then it's gonna explain it in two minutes. But was it not someone in the audience that shot her then? It was one of the other Supremes out to take her life. Things are about to hit the fan. I'm just not ready because I know I'm going to get to the last page of this book and try and turn it and it's, there's not going to be anything. Then I'm going to have to wait a month. And that was the part I didn't sign up for. I feel like this perspective could have been critical to restore me without giving away too much. Because Juliet's just like, I walk there, I give my speech and there's no description. But Kenji's the one in the background like, here's the plan for what if this goes bad here's what happens when people came in here like he's giving actual description whereas Juliet's perspective was like I'm talking wait no it was from Warner's perspective so it was even worse it was like I'm standing I have no emotions she looks hot this would have been so much more useful to me which I think is probably intentional why we didn't get it <laughs> Ooh, the iconic red green blue stripes of the reestablishment did we know that those were the colors I think we're getting some new information. Time to take all red, green, and blue out of my wardrobe. Shit, I'm wearing red, green, and blue. Ooh, no, I can't. I have so many theories. Oh no, stop Whitney, I'm gonna talk about them. If you've been on the internet in my presence, you know that I have a theory that like everyone in the series is a robot or at least Warner's a robot, things are robots. That's just something I pick up on and I don't know why. In this scene, he says the people in the audience, even though they're made of flesh and blood, they look like machines. Tahara said to my face via ebook, they're machines. Again, this is reading it out of order because we know in Defy Me, like they come back to life. Like you see them die, but then they're fine. What if the entire audience is just like machines and it was like all to freak you? But then can she kill people with her voice? Like, oh my God, what is happening? They turn their heads at the same time blinking in unison. Because if Juliet was shot with the bullet, she might be seeing something else because she's hallucinating them looking like real people. But it was from Warner's perspective. What is happening? <laughs> no, I hate this. I hate this. Maybe these are the actual CCRs, but the reestablishment just like controls what they do. They're like automatons for the reestablishment and they're not like actual leaders. Under this theory, Warner's also a CCR, which means Warner's an automaton, which means Warner's a robot. I win again. Warner's still a robot, no matter what y'all say. The more I read about how elite the people in power are in this series, I'm just like, they deserve to die. And that's the whole thing that confuses me about like, how do we rebuild this world? Because the power is so corrupt on the higher end of things, like all the leaders. Can you just kill all of them and start over? Or like, how do you, like, what do you do? So it's gonna be interesting. Oh, my bros, always on the same page. Warner catches my eye. Abort mission. That's me reading this ebook, knowing it's about to end and I'm about to get anxious about what happens next. Should I just quit while I'm ahead? Of course not. This was an ambush. Okay, Nazira. We have to discuss what I'm just learning. I feel like we were already told this and defy me, so I feel like I know that she said this to him already. What does an ambush mean? I need to stop taking a pause every 30 seconds to go over theories. Oh, when she's invisible and he goes, I know how this works. I invented this shit. Oh, love him. Here's the 
thing is like in Restore Me, this scene happened so fast and this is taking its time. And why wasn't this one in the actual book? Cause like in Restore Me, it's like a gun goes off, Juliet peels a bullet off her head. But in this one, it's like a movie. It's like the noise, everyone's reactions. We all look at Juliet, it's silent. Oh, it's so well written. I love this. They all pull weapons from their bodies. How did they get through? <sighs> Oh, Kenji's first move was to tackle Castle. I keep saying I hate him, but I'm still soft about it, okay? It's five years embedded in my genes. I have to care about Castle for like one second. Okay, Brendan's fine. We've been new. <laughs> oh, see, I tossed the pills at Winston. The girls deserve a Nobel Peace Prize. See, here's the thing is this part is now overlapping with what happens in Defy Me's beginning, so I'm like, what's gonna be different? Is this the same as Defy Me's first chapter, or is this, it's exactly the same? Ah, oh, jeez. Wait, so the Defy Me sampler was just a Shadow Me sampler? Oh my god. Wait, so then does Defy Me even start with those? Like, is that the beginning of Defy Me? That's actually kind of disappointing that it just ends the same way the next book begins. I think my main takeaway is like, I'm so mad that Epic Reads released the Defy Me snippet before we got Shadow Me because that spoiled everything. Like, literally, we'd already read the last two chapters of this book. Ah, oh, that's sad. Okay, but I guess final review. Full five stars. Even though, like, a couple parts I feel like were redundant, it added so much. I'm so tired. It's 4 a.m. I've been filming this and waiting to film this since 11 p.m. I love this book. I knew I loved Kenji, but now I know, like, Kenji is my ride or die. We are so similar. I would die for him. He is Juliet's best friend. I don't know if I'm on board for him and Nazira. I just, like, it's so insta-lovey, and, like, I love that he is so passionate, and I love that at the end they're, like, able to laugh together, but I gotta see it to believe it. I'm also disappointed that for years we've been asking is Kenji bisexual? Is Kenji pansexual? There's so many giveaway lines that seems like he could be and there were so many moments in the book where he was like describing how good Warner looked or something and I was like okay he's gonna talk about it now and he doesn't. It's the number one most talked about thing so in tomorrow's live stream that she's gonna do <laughs> I hope that she'll talk about that. Update she did talk about it. I feel like I should have done a whole reaction video to her live stream because that whole thing was so much. <laughs> she basically said it's not out of the realm of possibility that he's bi. Just nothing's confirmed. She hasn't talked about it in the books, which, whatever, but also, like, sigh. But that's her final answer. <laughs> Even though it wasn't discussed, Kenji is still pansexual. Wow, I think I'm just gonna stop talking because I do want to do a separate video that's a full review. I literally only had, like, one more thing to say, but my camera decided to die, so same. Just wanted to say thank you everyone so much for watching. Let me know if you liked this type of video because I was really hesitant whether I should only update when I have things to say or if I should catch my reactions as I was reading. How'd it go? <laughs> Were you bored? Did you like it? I'm so happy. Everyone said it was good. It was very good. I'm just... I'm a happy little bean. I'm so happy. I just remember there's so many the new theories I have now and I just... Ugh, okay, I blacked out. Goodbye, everyone. I hope you enjoyed Shadow Me. I hope you enjoyed watching me enjoy Shadow Me. Have a wonderful life.